the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. This is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. You know who you can't stop now? His name is Angus, hanging out with his good buddy Anton, two members of the 92 One City Street team, and they are at Canada in Region Avenue moving donuts, all in support, Krispy Kreme donuts, all mm-hmm. in support of Silo Mission. Good morning, Angus. Good morning. Can I ask, first off, you guys at 5 o'clock this morning showed up on Sterling Lion Parkway with an empty vehicle. How long did it take you to load up 500 boxes of Krispy Kreme donuts, and how many did you spill and have to resort? Uh, They were phenomenal. I think we were in and out of there with 500 dozen donuts in like 12 minutes. Wow. That's amazing. (laughs) That's impressive. That is amazing. And you guys are busy already off air. Angus is like, it's so busy here already. And we're like, oh, okay. We're <laughs> Donuts are flying we're off like, the shelves. You're not on the air yet, Angus. Is it really bad? And, and you guys are. It's already, people are dropping by already. Yeah, we uh, we are starting to set up our tent at 545, and folks are already lining up. I bet you we've sold 50 dozen, maybe even 60 dozen at this point already. Mm. That's impressive. Who, uh, who might have purchased the most dozens in one shot? Ooh, that is a great question. I know I heard a foreman talking about buying a dozen dozen. So a wow. dozen dozen. At. A foreman. See, he's that's I want to work for that guy, Phil. Great boss move right there. I'm not very good at math. So a dozen dozen is like uh, uh, what? 144 donuts. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank <laughs> you, Joe. The education system out there drinking. <laughs> hey, but she went to college for radio. <laughs> okay, let's set this. Let's just make sure we set this up here. Can add in. Parking lot, Region Avenue, fifteen dollar Krispy Kreme donuts, a dozen, all in support of uh, Silo Mission. All the all the proceeds going to Silo Mission. You're absolutely right about that. And 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 you can come by at any point, buy as many as you want. The people from Silo, and I'm really glad about this. All due respect, Angus, but you're not working the cash, and you're not working the debit machine. Would Would you guys trust the long hair radio man to touch money? Well, I am trusting you to house sit for me while yeah. I'm uh, gone this weekend with my cats. So hey, listen, I love the kitties. I will make sure that they are a okay all weekend long. I'll be honest. What I'm more worried about, and Phil and I have both been on location with you as well as Kirby. You're about 122 pounds, but can eat like about a 240 pound guy. And I'm going to tell you something. It's called the City 500, not the City 498. Okay, you can't eat two dozen donuts. We got to sell them all. All right, I'll uh, I'll take it easy. It'll be four ninety nine. Okay, <laughs> beautiful Angus. We'll be checking in with you all morning. Go, get, come on, Joe. Go get your donuts. Get your hot donuts <laughs> here. <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Uh, Headlights has come up on the program for a few days now with one guy starting it all by complaining, saying he's got the, the a newer vehicle that has brighter lights or, I guess, LED lights or whatever, and people are always flashing their brights at him, thinking he's got the brights on. Well, we finally made the pivot. All year long, we have, well, summer long, I should say, we have people bitching about other drivers not turning on their lights because the automatic sensors don't work correctly the way that they should and now we've reached a point where a larger percent of the population is going to work and coming home from work in the dark and that's where headlights matter and people are realizing how insane the headlights are nowadays Uh, the manufacturers are making lights entirely too bright far brighter than they should be and then aiming have you uh, have you checked if your headlights are aimed correctly Uh, a big thing that i've noticed uh, year-round is that people will buy pickup trucks, way overload them, and then their headlights are pointing at the tops of the hydro poles. Everything is incorrect. It doesn't matter what you do. Your your lights aren't shining where they should, and nobody cares. Just nobody cares what's going on. Or they jack their pickup trucks up halfway to the moon, and if you put two squirrels in the truck box, your suspension is so weak that you squirrels you have your headlights misaligned again. I've never aimed my lights, but I don't jack the truck up. Possibly when I'm towing, I should aim the lights. I've never thought of that. Yeah, and it comes up actually quite a bit, the aiming. That's the professor, of course. Yes. 
Um, but that might be some uh, something to look into. If uh, Kirby, you're getting a new vehicle, you might be uh, aiming the lights. dealing with LED oh lights God. soon too. Don't tell me I got to worry about the aiming yeah, of the lights. Might want to trade honestly, the new vehicle in before yeah. you get it. Like, get rid of it. Uh, I don't know <laughs> where how are to the aim. lights at. I can't aim these lights properly. I'm trading it in. I don't know what oh to do God. here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> vote vote hooligan wants to talk about speed bumps. I believe in parking lots. You know, you go on to uh, parking lots with strip malls or. You know, like I'm just coming out of Home Depot or like Sobeys there on Main Street, Riverbend. They got those big speed bumps. You know, other places, you know, you know they're there, but a lot of places you're driving around looking for a parking spot. If they're painted yellow, boom, you know them right away. But if they're still black, like the asphalt, like, you know, f- it, bang! Like, for f- <laughs> sakes, like paint them yellow, for God's sakes. Like, I'm not looking down the f- ground all the time <laughs> there are some huge speed bumps in parking lots <laughs> yeah oh yeah okay i always refer to these and this is i call them uh you know bouncers basically like for the girls because you better be wearing a good bra if you hit some of those speed bumps mm. because i'm telling you like you can fly right out of the bra <laughs> Like, I just always joke with my girlfriends when we uh, hit a speed bump. I'm like, hang on. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah there are. Well, the yeah. idea is to slow down in parking lots. I don't mind having them. You feel them. it. I don't mind having them. But they. I think what Hooligan's saying is you got to properly mark them, which is fine. Uh, rocket launch yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, looks like this foursome be- with, with Guilty and Kirby, the golf game where Big N's jumped in now. Sir Rodney. Sir Rodney. Sounds like we might need to go eight uh, or at least five. Well, if they're going virtual, like Kirby suggested, it's in the city. You mm. can book as many of those tee times as you need. Okay, we'll include Dennis the Menace here. Right. Hey, good morning, PJK. Listening to the bone phone this morning, all the talk about golfing. Got me excited. I'm actually going golfing at Windsor Park tomorrow afternoon. That's Thursday. Mm. Um, hey, with all the people wanting to go golfing, I think we should uh, maybe try a golf thing with uh, the 92 City FM Bone Phone regulars or oh. even anybody who wants to join. I think that'd be a great, great smashing time. Imagine Vinny golfing. So you guys do the uh, mm-hmm. highlight uh, band every week thing. How about highlighting the Tragically Hip for a week? Oh. Playing some of their lesser played songs that are all awesome and uh let's go blue and uh let's go jets yeah 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 yeah. there's a lot of layers to this call yes there is so can i mention the tragically hip i believe uh showcase next week amazing okay next week dennis so you'll be uh, happy to hear that and uh they'll be looking for some uh Tracks you don't hear very often. That's and, one. And a possible PJK or Kirby hosted golf adventure. The Kirby Invitational <laughs> could happen. Uh, the, uh, and you this know, I've virtual. always wanted to host a golf tournament. I'll tell you what. You like uh, planning events, too. I really do. So a party? This Absolutely. Is, this is all on you. Uh, uh, my schedule's kind of busy. Uh, Phil's is uh, full of hockey right now. Uh, this is the Kirby Invitational. Kirby Invitational. So let's see. Guilty. Sir Rodney. Maybe Big N comes into town. He yeah, wasn't not fully sure. committed. Yeah, yeah. And now you got Dennis the Menace. You might need two foursomes. Mm. And there's a lot of simulators out there and some great places in town. So it'll, it'll work for you. Uh, Vinny has mentioned golf a few times on the Boston Pizza text line, too, so I'm sure he'd jump wow. in. Would be. It's exciting. The Kirby Invitational. <laughs> it's all on you now. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. Philly Joe and Kirby's. Fum Andre, one long year and your time has come, man. No marks, no scars, no blemishes on the Hulkster, brother. But inside, man, I've been scarred for one long year. It's so hard for me to sit back here in this studio looking at a guy out here hollering my name when last year I spent more money on spilt liquor in (laughs) bars from one side of this world to the other than you made. You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, woo, wheeling dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun. Oh, that is so good. Both of those, both that that mic work from those two. Oh, and I will say this right now: that last piece of the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, I wish was made up. Mm. But that's the way he lived. Oh, yeah. He lived that character for so many years. And Hulk Hogan, 
I had to break Kirby's heart. That clip right there against Andre the Giant. Kirby who just watched the Vince McMahon documentary on Netflix and came to me, I think, late yesterday and said... I'm a wrestling fan. Uh, did Hulk Hogan really not know that Andre the Giant was uh, going to do stuff in the ring? And I said no. He made that up. <laughs> he made that up. But that was WrestleMania three. That yeah. was uh, one of the biggest events of all time. I was so shocked that Kirby came to us. She inspired today's Throwdown yes, Thursday did. film. Yeah, yeah. Ric oh, wow. Flair versus Hulk Hogan. And this isn't like who would win in a fight. To me, this is who's the GOAT. And I know some people are going to go, oh, neither. Let's go with Brett the Hitman Hart. And that's fine, too. But for, for, for the uh, idea of today's Throwdown Thursday, Hogan versus Flair, who's the GOAT? Who's better in your mind? Kirby, we'll start with you. I fear no man, no beast, or evil brother. Well, I got to take the Hulk. And she Is that an actual Hogan Yeah, goal? Is it? Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. cutting a promo. Wow. She came in this morning and goes, Joe, I learned what cutting a promo means. <laughs> she was very excited. <laughs> That's been my show lately, that Ric Flair documentary. Or not Ric Flair, sorry. Vince McMahon documentary on, uh, yeah. on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, I watched yeah. it every morning on the treadmill this week. And I'm telling you, it's so cool learning about wrestling. Yeah. And, uh, and well, obviously, <laughs> because I have heard you guys talk about it for the last, what, seven years we've been together as a show. That's right. And so it's like, uh, it's kind of cool to make those correlations mm -hmm. um, phil is inspired because i told him the other day saturday night's main event is coming back and they're bringing back i believe jesse the body ventura to do some of the commentary oh, he was a fantastic color commentator See, okay, I'm, I w I'm gonna go with Hulk Hogan, but I will say I thought you already said you were going. This is a, I'll tell you what, this I'm could be back. You relax; those donuts are gonna be sold out by the time Kirby's done with this opinion on today's <laughs> yeah. Toronto. She's all I'm, in. I'm a little conflicted though because I'm learning a lot about how he is kind of a, a bad guy. He kind of screwed a few people over. Mm -hmm. Can't really trust the guy. I did see his ta his sex tape back in the day, and uh, <laughs> so I mean, I I, I kind of have to go with the dude with the mustache. After eight o'clock, Joe and Philly's opinion. <laughs> She's taking all the time. We're all out of We're time. We're all out of time. Who are you going with? You're going with Hogan, yes. but you're conflicted? Yes. Okay, that leaves a few seconds for you and I, Joe. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Phil. Flair's the greatest mic worker of all time, but I'll take Hogan because I grew up on him. Yeah, and he's probably the biggest mainstream star in the sports. But on a personal note, I'm going with the nature boy, Ric Flair. I got to work with him here in Winnipeg years ago, and I'll tell you a real quick story. And then I got to work with him in the WWE. He's one of the interviews that is so cool. I got to do when I was down there with him and Razor Ramon. But Ric Flair, talk about the money this guy used to spend. He walked into the old Polo Park Inn, where Canada Inn's Polo Park is right now, and uh, he had Barry Windham with him and a couple of other guys, and they were getting ready, and he went to Polo Park Mall, and he had this, like, uh, Tundra type of sweater on, and he took it off right off in the lobby, and he says, I don't want this sweater anymore, and he threw it right there in the garbage <laughs> and put on the one he picked up at Polo Park, and he started doing his strut in the lobby of the hotel. But anyway, I'm going with the Nature Boy. He was a way better wrestler, great mic work, and uh, he's just an old-school wrestler, more than the showman. Okay, Hogan or Flair, you can weigh in on the text line, uh, 762 or on Facebook, the 92.1 City Facebook page, and you can win Dropkick Murphy's tickets. Yep. This, this is the Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. I think Joe will let uh, you do the math for the rest of the morning uh, on behalf of Angus, our wonderful street teamer, who's out on location this morning at Canad <laughs> in Transcone on Region Avenue. He said it himself, Phil, that the Alberta education system failed him too because he's from Alberta <laughs> as it did Kirby. I don't know what they're teaching him in uh, Alberta. Small town, Alberta, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say... Uh, thank you to also Danielle, picked up five dozen. Dennis and Heather, four dozen. Jonathan, three dozen. And Angus, apparently an excavator dropped in there and picked up some donuts. Sure did. It was the most Winnipeg thing I've seen so far this morning. <laughs> and did you pile the donuts, like, in the ex excavator, excavator, or did he get out, or how did that all work? Just threw them right into the bucket. <laughs> awesome. Now, obviously, we're, we're doing this for a really great cause with Silent Mission, and, and I want to get to that because that's the main point. But I also just want to ask, because we did bring it up on the show, that you guys were going to set up a gift table uh, in case anybody had any <laughs> gifts for me. <laughs> did, uh, How's that going? How, and more importantly, how, how yeah. is that? gift table <laughs> it, it's looking like a social table right now kirby i have so many presents for you wow Shut up. <laughs> is there a basket of shampoos and body oils and stuff <laughs> it's a garbage can <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen, uh, on a serious note, Kirby it was talking about silo mission, and that happens uh, obviously with Thanksgiving weekend, but today happens to be World Homeless Day too. Mm. Oh, and silo does many great things, including take care of uh, some people that uh, have been down on their luck. But if we sell out, we're going to be at $7,500. That's Philly and I doing the math, okay? Mm. Not you and Kirby. That's right. But how close are we now percentage-wise? Can you get us a number from an accountant over there, <laughs> Angus? Uh, yeah, from my official accountant that I pay every week, uh, he said about 92% sold out. 92%? That doesn't mean we're there yet. No, we want to sell these. Like, yeah, let's yeah. get it done. Let's get it done. So get your butt down to Canada Inn on Regent in Transcona uh, selling Krispy Kreme donuts by the dozen for 15 bucks with all so you normally you'd have to go across the city to get Krispy Kreme for the office we brought the Krispy Kreme closer to you if you're out in that part of town and Angus since we're doing Throwdown Thursday and I know you're a wrestling fan Hogan or Flair Oh, it's Ric Flair, the nature boy, every day. Mm. <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby. Podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. I'm talking Starbucks right off a of hop with Derek Stroop, who's at Rumors this week. And because, look, Derek, welcome to Winnipeg, first of all. 92-1 yeah. City. It's great to have you in studio. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to be here. Mm, and he's got a delicious-looking Starbucks drink there. It's it's pink. And what do we got? That's a pink drink. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and now, listen, that's what it's called. It almost seems sarcastic. If you walked up to somebody, because it, it, it is a pink drink. Um, they're super popular now. I've been drinking them for, like, two years and at first, it was like a hidden find on the menu. Mm. But now it's like very, very popular among women, it seems like. But <laughs> And Derek. And me. Uh, no but, judgment. Yeah, but it is delicious. And, and it, it's just a, got some coconut milk. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit like some juice in there. Not as heavy as a coffee. It looks good. Speaking of delicious, that accent, though. like, (laughs) Thank thank you. I mean, I I just get excited because I got a lot of relatives up north from you in Tennessee. So it it sounds like a little bit of home. Down girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we were watching some uh, YouTube of you this morning. That's how we prepare for interviews. And she heard your voice, and she's been excited for you to come I was like a southern boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, up here, no, y'all have got accents, too. A little nasal, a little bit more nasal, you know, up here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, Not as quite back of the throat, but I like y'all's accents, too. I mean, the A, A, oh, A, and and y'all say boys, like, way to go, boys. (laughs) That away, boys. It makes me, seriously, it feels like, I feel like a hockey player, like I just got done, like my line's done, I'm coming up. Way to go, boys. (laughs) We're all just one big extension of a hockey team here. Let's go, boys. We can do it. Yeah. Let's go, boys. That's gonna, it. I'm Here gonna, we go, boys. I'm going to come see you at Rumors this week and be like, that a boy. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, there's been a couple. I've heard that a couple times. Uh, great shift, Derek. Great yeah, shift. Yeah, great shift. Well, oh, you're uh, you're Alabama. Well, that's where you were born and raised. Yeah, yeah. I, I am from Alabama. Uh uh, you know, we talked about it before we got on air. You asked me if I was a Bama fan. First thing that came to mind when yeah, you... Yeah, and, and you, lots of people do that. That you must cheer for the Crimson, uh, Crimson Tide and that uh, historic football team, the, the uh, greatness, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I hate them. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I try to tell people as soon as I can because it's such a peace treaty, and, and they end up liking me so much better. I go, hey, I'm from Alabama, and I hate Alabama football. And they go, man, I like you so much better immediately. <laughs> I mean, in Winnipeg, it probably doesn't carry that weight, but I mean, Bama fans are insufferable. I could never be one. I'm, I've I've uh, recycled, rescued a dog. There's no way I could be a Bama fan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so is it now? Of course, the the rivalries between Alabama and the other SEC uh, SEC teams. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, right. So you got like Georgia and yeah, Clemson and Tennessee. That. Yeah, uh, you're gonna. I mean, all, uh, Auburn, which is who I would root for in the state. Florida. Uh, yeah, I mean, the SEC is uh, the the pinnacle of college football. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it, it's the best, but. And don't catch me rooting for Bama. And if you say that to somebody, do you mm-hmm. like? It, 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 do they give you flack right away? Is it like, or do you either love Alabama or you hate them? Or yeah, like, yeah. I mean, well, they were just so dominant for so long, and th- and that works with any sport. When a team wins so many times, you eventually become tired of them. Mm-hmm. And then when their fan base don't have any teeth, it's even tougher. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
<laughs> and, and so, you know, it, that's it's how we the, feel about Leaf fans up yeah, here. <laughs> exactly. Hockey. Go get them, boys. Yeah, yeah. go get them, boys. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, the SEC, there's not too much pushback on the SEC on the football side. Everybody kind of agrees that they're pretty dominant. You'll have Ohio State, mm, you know, Michigan, USC, sure. Michigan. There's some other big programs that'll take their jabs, but for the most part, the SEC is going to dominate that. All right. Yeah. We've got some uh, donuts in here, Krispy Kreme. Uh, help yourself. I noticed that, yeah. uh, you know, doing a little reading about you this morning that you're a big fan of Waffle House. Is it Waffles in general or just Waffle House, the restaurant? No, it's Waffle House, the restaurant. It's a whole ambiance. It's like this, you know, this this lady named Mabel comes up, and she's been working there for 40 years. And Sugar, does she call you sugar? Oh, honey? Ex- yeah, honey? you get it. You yeah. get it. Hey, honey. Mm-hmm. Hey, honey. <laughs> you, your daddy was in here earlier. Both of y'all, my goodness, y'all are, y'all are fine as frog hair. Look at y'all. Y'all look just alike. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the Waffle House is, and like Waffle House is in the south, are so different. There's some throughout the states, but they change quickly. Like there's some in Colorado, and they're not like the ones I grew. The ones in Colorado are like rehab centers with hash browns. <laughs> like, I mean, it's total. It's 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 a different it's a different vibe down yeah, south. Yeah, it's yeah. not like where I'm from. We we go there for everything. We go there at, like after blackouts and baptisms. Like <laughs> it, it does the whole whole run for us, but. Uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. It's just I like diners in general. Mm, yeah, uh, Canada's got some great diners now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I've been to just about every major city y'all have in this country this summer, and I ran into some incredible diners. I gotta say, breakfast. Yeah. If you're a fan of breakfast, that I like the diner experience. Mm-hmm. It's where it's at. Like, yeah. I mean, give me some hash browns. And, and now, at breakfast in the South is that a whole different ball of wax? Are there things on that menu that are on your plate that Canadians would not have? Like, well, yeah, I mean, we. Grit. Just grits. Immediately, grits would be the first one. Yep. Um, and also, what's happened as a Southerner, our breakfast is such a big deal because, you know, we are truly you know, the heartland, the farmers, all mm. that. So we started off, it's traditionally huge breakfasts. Well, none of us farm anymore. Yeah. So now, <laughs> so now we start off with biscuits and gravy, and then we go lay down in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so these meals were built for people working 12 yeah. hour days yes. and, off. We, and we haven't changed how we eat. So we're all just in rascal scooters, <laughs> you know, staring out the window uh, going, man, maybe we shouldn't oh, have done grits. Oh, that's great. Derek Stroop, this, uh, you're a lot of fun, man. We appreciate you coming in this morning. We have tickets to give away too, right? Yeah. Craig? If you want to go check out uh, Derek at Rumors tomorrow nights. All you got to text is, uh, let's say, Waffle House. Waffle yeah, I like it. House, yeah, text go. Waffle House to 762 right now. We're throwing in the draw for some tickets. Enjoy your stay in Winnipeg, Derek. Yeah, thanks for having me. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. Just want to say this to Iron Mike this morning. I know he's on location at uh, Canada in Transcona. Pull that wallet out, buy a couple dozen. I'll pay you for them when you get back to the office here in Osborne Village. Because, you know, we love to support the cause as well. And we get donuts out of the out of the out of the situation. What do you guys think? You in it's for the that? least that Iron Mike could do, honestly. Well, no, I'll buy him off him. Like buy the donuts, Mike, and I will pay you when you get back to the office. That's what I mean. The least he could do is just is, transport them. That's he, th- thank you, Kirby. Absolutely. Right now, he just keeps sending names <laughs> of people that are purchasing, and and I'd like to give them a shout out if I could. <laughs> Mike's uh, on it. Can I just say, like, he he's giving us updates. Like, uh, some guy named Wally just walked by. He didn't buy donuts, but he's on his way home from work. Like, he's giving us moment to moment updates out there. Right. So, Wally, <laughs> thank you for not supporting. <laughs> he had just eaten breakfast. Thanks for oh, nothing, yeah. Wally. But these people have Jeff, three dozen. Chuck Taylor, four dozen. Carly, three dozen. Craig from uh, Domination Palette, four dozen. Trevor, four dozen. Now, here we go. Iron Mike again. I'll tell you. <laughs> Hold on, what's that? Under 40, bo- oh, 32 boxes left. That's an exact count. 32 boxes left. These will be Let's gone. Let's go. Let's well, get them sold. Uh, mm-hmm. If Mike was actually paying attention, there should be 30 boxes left because Philly wants you to bring home two. Two. Back to the office, Iron Mike. Ron, the friendly carpet cleaner, two dozen. Woo-hoo. No, oh, yeah, I think he wants a woo from you. Kurt. Yeah. Woo. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So, proceeds, all of it, Silo Mission, $15 a box, Krispy Kreme Donuts. We started with 500 dozen. Yeah, yeah, it's been a crazy day, and uh, we didn't know what to expect, how fast this would go, but uh, 
it looks like within a two-hour window, mm-hmm. that's uh, going to be. And I've suggested now, and I hope Iron Mike's listening, that we pick other parts of the city and do the same. If Krispy Kreme would do it, mm-hmm. I think it would be fantastic to see uh, what kind of numbers we can pull. Mm-hmm. Let us know in the text line, what part of town should we come to next? The traveling, That's a great idea, yeah, Phil. The traveling Krispy <clears throat> Kreme City 500 Roadshow. And maybe the next time we'll get out there on location. You know, I mean, we love, a, we love, love a field trip, don't we? I would love it. Yeah. Okay. Can add in Transcona, Krispy Kreme Donuts. Get out there. Pick up your dozen. It's all for a great cause, Silo Mission. This, this is the Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. You want to throw those uh, names out there real quick before we get into the question, Joe? If this was like a, a real race, like the City 500, we'd have enough sponsored vehicles in the race <laughs> for sure. You know, like the number five car. Well, I got a Rolly. <laughs> Bought up five, doesn't <laughs> And then you've got uh, Southern Shade, Window and Door. They picked up four dozen. Mike, three dozen. Uh, Tom. And our buddy Nick, remember from Color Melt? Yeah. Phil, they picked up four dozen. Superior Scales, Caden, three dozen in the number two car. <laughs> we also got Sean, oh, wait. four dozen, and we are officially sold out. That's it. What? Sold out. Sold Woo! out. The race is over. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 747 will have a total time of the City 500 race coming up a little bit later on for you. That is absolutely um, unbelievable. That's so fun. You know, the way uh, the City of Winnipeg responds to something like this, the 92 1 City listener. What's the t- so we started at six o'clock this morning? Yeah, less I, than two hours. I'm going to go with the official time because people were lined up, and uh, since Angus and Anton and the city crew were set up early, they actually instead of making people wait till six o'clock, started selling. So the official time start time was five fifty two. It wraps up at seven forty seven. That's five minutes short of two hours. Mm. That was just under a two hour city five hundred seventy five hundred dollars going to. Silo Mission, which is amazing. And also, uh, Krispy Kreme does have a really cool fundraising opportunity that uh, like mm-hmm. other groups in the community can inquire about as well. And so, you know, if and, you're interested in doing something similar, you can look into it. And that's where the idea came from mm-hmm. uh, originally, because Krispy Kreme has been doing stuff in the community as well. But I think we're going to amp it up again. Iron Mike said he's all in for that. And we've been getting some great ideas, Phil. That was a great idea to put it up on the text line yeah. this morning. And we have a lot of areas to cover here if we can do another City 500 or two. So Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Philly, Joe, Kirby. Philly, Joe, and Kirby podcast. The Philly, Joe, and Kirby podcast. 25% of people have a favorite one of these. I've got the top five answers. 780 City, good morning. Uh, A pillow. Uh, That's a great answer, but no, it's not in the top five. Okay, thank you. Thanks for playing. We have True's tickets on the line this morning. 780 City, 780, 2484. Good morning. Philly. Philly for the lifeline. Let's go chair. Uh, no, but Probably that's another a, good answer. Might be a higher percentage. Like my dad yes. had a chair. If he came into the room and you were in his chair, you got out. And did you notice that if that chair was old enough, when you did sit in that chair, you could tell it was your dad's chair because that butt groove oh, absolutely. would never lift back up. <laughs> did you guys also have it like assigned seating basically at the dinner table? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Dad was head of the table. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Hi, is it a pen? Number two, Ooh. a favorite pen. Do you have a favorite pen? I am so picky with my the pens that I journal with. Like, mm, they have yes. to be specific types of pen. That makes sense, eh? 25%. Gel pen. I love a gel pen. Right. Good stuff. Hi, City. Go with Kirby, please. Can I just hear the question one more time? Sure. 25% of people say they have a favorite one of these. They have a favorite pair of shoes. That would make sense, too, but that number might be higher. It's not on the top five list here. Mm, okay. That's a great answer, too. 780 City, 780, 2480 for completely useless trivia for Truth tickets. Good morning. Is it um, a coffee mug? Uh, sorry? A coffee mug? Coffee mug. Uh, no, but that makes sense, too. Mm-hmm. Another good yeah. yeah, Good guess. Number might be higher. Might be higher, yeah. Hi, City. Yeah, uh, Kirby. Kirby, what do you think? A favorite... Fork, spoon type of utensil? No, no utensils here. I always grab, like, I'm sure I'm not the only one, but there's like specific in my utensil drawer. Like, I like, there's a fork I like the most. Mm. 
So they're not, they're not matching, is what you're saying. No, your forks. <laughs> no okay, I'm just matching. Okay. I go into my drawer. <laughs> I was just thinking. I go. So I got twelve of them, I think, in there, and they all look the same. But this oh, yeah. is my favorite one right here. <laughs> favorite pen, favorite fork, man. As the world turns. Good morning, city. <laughs> what world? It's her yeah. apartment. <laughs> pen. <laughs> Hi, uh, Philly. Phil, what do you think? Favorite pair of socks. Not socks. That number might be higher too. Yeah, no doubt. Seven eighty city. Hello there. Hey, good morning. Is it underwear? Not favorite underwear. That's a good guess. Any kind of clues up for grabs this morning, Joe? Um, Hello? Hi. Uh, hi there. Go ahead. Hello? <laughs> hi. Hi. Um, um, can I get uh, Kirby? Last lifeline, Kerbs. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to say a favorite child. No. No, that's not on this list. Favorite uh-huh. pet is on the list, but uh, that was number what? Uh, is four. It clo- my cats are my children. Is it clothing? Is it uh, no, no, no? Hi, city. Hi there. Hi. Is it a hat? Not a hat. Say no way. Eh? Seven eighty city. Good morning. Uh, next position. What's that? Uh, no, it's not uh, your favorite position. No. <laughs> no. Wow. That's a, that's a good answer. I think, again, higher percentage. I am a higher go-to, percentage. You know? That's a good answer. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, he stole your answer, we... didn't he? <laughs> I think we all have one. I don't know. Uh, is it a favorite number? A favorite, a favorite number. number. No, it's not a favorite number. That number would be higher, I think. Mm. Than twenty five percent. This is something you would pretty much have to do, I guess, to uh, to consider it your favorite. Hi there. Like a TV show to fall asleep to. How about that? How about twenty five percent of people will tell you they have a favorite TV show? A movie was on the list. A pet. A pen was number two, and a favorite restaurant mm. rounded wow. out the top five. Yeah, a favorite TV show. Great stuff. Hey, who's this? Um, it's, uh... <laughs> you don't have to say your name. Congratulations, Mr. Anonymous! <laughs> the Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. How about them donuts? How about them crispy, crispy cream? Sold out. The 500 dozen sold out this morning. Well, I'll tell you what. i just watching on Facebook right now, and I don't have the sound on, but Anton and Angus, our promo team that were, uh doing the delivery are sitting on the back of the city pickup with a dozen that's open and they're each holding on a couple of donuts there better not be ours i said an hour ago i wanted uh, iron mike the boss who was down there correct yep. to give us to buy us not give we're, we're like yep. um, this is a uh, this is for silo mission so i said buy a couple of dozen for pjk and bring them back to the office so if he comes back empty-handed put it this way mike if you're coming back empty-handed don't bother coming back that's Brother. a good way of putting it. Brother. You are a parent. <laughs> Dave, you're doing this brother thing now. Because yeah. well, all of a sudden you watch a W, well, not WWE. It's about a Vince McMahon uh, documentary on Netflix. It becomes our throwdown Thursday. All of a sudden you're Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Is <laughs> cutting promos every Hulk mania has taken over yeah. the curb star. Okay? Kirby, Kirby mania. Yeah. Throw it out Thursday since you brought it up. Yeah. If you want to win Dropkick Murphy's tickets, you can go to the 92 One City Facebook page. Text the Boston Pizza text line works as well. And tell us who's the GOAT, who's the wrestling GOAT, Hogan or Flair. And look, it was tough to come up with those two because literally we're all, we're getting votes for like, no way, it's The Rock, or no way, it's superstar sure. Billy Graham or Brett the Hitman Art. That's a vote too. If you want to say someone else other than those two, fine. But we kind of whittled it down to the the two biggest names of all time? I would uh, have to say so. They are the iconic names for mm, sure. I, and, oh, uh, man. When you, run, uh, when you run with the guys, and listen, there's different reasons why people are voting. It's just kind of a fun vote, and, and believe it or not, if anybody had guessed that it wasn't me who inspired a wrestling question today, mm-hmm. it was Kirby. We're Hell some, yeah, brother. See? That's how she's got the name. And I'll tell you what. How long is this going to go on for? The well, Kirby Wrestling promo phase. Throwdown <laughs> Thursday is only today. Thank God. For more Philly Joe and Kirby. Lock it into 921 City weekday mornings 6 to 10.